for myself, Swaswani and our team, I would like to present a, a very brief on the climate change impacts uh, in Asia. As uh, all of us know, the carbon dioxide actually is increasing at an alarming rate. In fact, these are the latest figures because for April 2016, we will get only by the middle of May. These are the figures for March 2016. Now it is almost 404, 404 ppm. Whereas in the last year, it was 401 prior to that matter, 399. And in fact, uh, this uh, May, in fact, the highest uh, was actually 407 recorded on May 1st. This is the record from uh, NOVA from the Mauna Loa observer says. Why I am showing this is because this is one of the culprits for the so-called global warming. And I still remember while I was teaching to the undergraduate students in Kerala Agricultural University almost 30 years back, I was teaching my students that the CO2 constants are about 330 ppm. Now in my life I have seen up, it has risen from 330 to almost 404. Now, when we see the records for the whole globe, in fact, WMA has recently declared that the 2015 last year is the warmest year for the whole globe on record. In fact, if you see the 2015, in fact, that bar is almost at the highest level. When we see our own country, say India in Asia, again we see if you Compare the annual temperatures from the 6190 average, we can see that for almost from 1974-75 onwards, they are always above that uh, normal. And though 2015 is not the warmest or the hottest year for India, but 20, 2009, 2010 are hottest. But what we see is that uh, temperatures are increasing all over the world and also in India. And this is the, actually the latest figure for March 2016 for the whole globe, for the land as well as ocean, because normally what we understand is the temperatures, we always talk about the land, but even the ocean also we see that uh, the temperatures are much above, because March 2016 again, what we find is the warmest record in the last 100 years. In fact, if we see even in Australia, particularly the Victoria and other areas, we have the highest temperatures, even in South India we have that one. When we actually compare it with our Ikrisat morning, we had a discussion about Ikrisat temperatures. In fact, this April, when I compare the daily temperatures of April with the normal, normal means the average I have taken for the last 15 years, 2001 to 15, 15 years, compared with the year 2016, the temperature was always above the average and not by 1 degree or 0.5 degree. Sometimes they are more by 4 degrees, even 5 degrees contingent. The so-called heat wave conditions existed not for one period, for several weeks at Ikrisad we have seen. So, we have the challenge of uh, higher temperatures, not only in April or May, even in the Karib season as well as the Rabi season. But what about the rainfall trends when we talk of the climate change? Generally, what we talk of, uh, say, temperatures increases or rainfall either decreases or enhancements. But when you see the India rainfall for the 137 years of record, what we see is that we do not find any great trend in the southwest monsoon rainfall because southwest monsoon is the most important rainy season for this country. 137 years we do not find any great trends or changes in the rainfall. But various studies, but let me go for me and others and also ours, what we see is that there is no great change in the total rainfall amount, but the rainfall per day there are changes. Then what's happening is per day more rainfall is occurring. That is the number of days in which you get rainfall are decreasing. That means the intensity of rainfall is increasing, whereas the total rainfall doesn't change much. So when you have got this kind of complications of rainfall changes, temperature changes, and also another problem is that it is not spatially the same. Even in fact, when we see one state like say the Andhra Pradesh or Telangana or Maharashtra or any state, the neighboring districts have got different trends. So a micro level climatic analysis is necessary. So we need to have a detailed climate change analysis because 
once we identify the problems the challenges then we can understand the opportunities for the climate smart agriculture now this in fact morning we had a discussion about the sat in 2013 we have worked on the changes in the climate in india and this was actual under a project we have done and we have presented it to the government of india icr and others they were surprised to see that are there any real changes in the areas under climates yes we found that there are changes particularly in say bihar and madhya pradesh what we see is that suppose you take say this madhya pradesh and say here the orange color indicates uh, the semi arid you see the semi arid areas are actually slowly moving from west to east this side in the same way for bihar also in bihar you know the actual semi arid was very less uh, during the previous period whereas now it is much higher in fact we have done it uh, up to 2004 data then in uh, two years back again icr asked us to see that is it really true are there are there real changes in bihar and madhya pradesh please prove that so what you have done we took a entirely different set from the climate research unit of the east anglia from uk and we have taken latest data up to 2014 we took 30 years averages from 2014 to previous 1985 and also prior to that one fit for 84 again we find almost the exact result that means we are very confident that in india the semi arid tropics areas are increasing and when we quantify that one a bit i'm showing only just two examples for madhya pradesh what we see is that the semi arid areas have increased by almost 3.8 million hectares whereas in bihar they have increased by 2.66 million hectares so there are changes from where these are coming from the rise of humid areas mostly from the rise of humid they are actually converted into the semi arid areas and in some states like gujarat and rajasthan the arid areas actually they are slightly becoming lower and then the semi arid is increasing there so what is happening is the semi arid area in india is in fact increasing is it an opportunity to some extent i can say that it is an opportunity because we have the expertise whether from the crops point of view or from the watersheds and the management and others perhaps this is an opportunity for us to understand more about the climate changes here and try to Uh, bring our technology such that the poor farmers and the farming systems can be improved and the livelihoods can be improved now what about to say some parts of uh, say nalgonda again in telangana what we again see is that uh, for the past uh, say few years we see that the climates are becoming slightly from even semi arid to arid so what are the implications so the old varieties which are maize and pigeon which are very common there they are likely to fail more in broad times and the, here we have an opportunity where the crop diversification is possible and the intersection of the climate smart varieties from ecrisat and other nars can be expanded there and see that the uh, failures are reduced and when we see the myanmar because i thought i can show one or two slides from myanmar also again in myanmar the when you see the number of days between onset uh, of the monsoon and also the withdrawal when you see early it was almost uh, something 113 114 100 even 20 days now it is slowly coming up to 100 days that means the number of days the monsoon active even in myanmar is actually going down and where, where are the actually the uh, cl climate risk areas in myanmar when you see this particular area here what we see is that uh, for the drought these are the areas where the drought can become a, a severe problem in future because of the projected climates whereas here the extreme day temperature that means both the temperature as well as the moisture these are going to be the limiting here and again what we see is uh, this is a challenge but there can be an opportunity for us now to understand the impacts of uh, climate change on agriculture and crops one tool we use the crop growth simulation models and here we have actually done on pulses mostly particularly pigeon pea as well as groundnut and last 4 5 years we are working at ikrisat as well as the other locations and we try to develop or identify the cultivar coefficients for groundnut of four varieties icg 9214 and other important varieties the 351 as well as 2260 and pgnt es3r and our icph267 so this we have actually estimated and when we try to understand what is the impact based on there are two ways of again understanding the impacts one is take the outputs from the global 
models and then from these global models actually you understand what will happen to the climate, future climate at the particular location and use the simulation models. They, when we do this work, what we see is that on particularly for groundnut, almost uh, say 10% reduction is expected. Now, what measures we can take for bringing resilience such that you know the 10% reduction is not there, we will discuss. And the other method is instead of taking the projections because there are at least uh, 17 models available which are most probably uh, always recommended by people and many models you know they differ in their projections. So one way of solving is that uh, take the base data and then increase the temperature by 1 degree or 2 degree or 3 degrees and also temp uh, rainfalls also increase or decrease. So when we do this kind of uh, projections and try to use the simulation models for pigeon, what we see is that one, whatever the changes we actually put, uh, uh, overlay on the base data always the yields are actually getting reduced. In fact, the worst case is that when the temperature increases by 2 degrees, which is very much possible, and if the rainfall reduced by 20%, there can be almost 28% reduction in the PGNP, particularly the TSTR variety. So what we see is that the climate change is really going to impact the crop yields. Either we use any one of the either projected models or we actually bring our own thing. It is actually, we are having actually a problem in the getting that one. So management and a better variety, these are the solutions as we know. And at the AP Rice Custom, we are working actually at uh, all the 13 districts and about 38 uh, mandals, one way of actually bringing the uh, uh, climate change impact understanding is that uh, to bring awareness about the rainfall and climate and climate change among this. So we have actually done for about 13 places we actually we have installed the rain gauges and we are actually educating the farmers how to take the data on their own and then uh, from this uh, we are now automating this thing and put the, in the local language, the climate, agroclimate and what are the problems they can have and which is the best time of sowing than others, this kind of information. That is very much, this is actually as a part of climate aware, this is actually one way of solution. And also yesterday I have seen a mail from Joanna that at Kotapalli there is AWS and in fact we need more information. So I thought I will just add one slide here. So in fact at Kotapalli we have installed this in a school. And we train every year the ninth class and also the 10th class students how to use the data logger, how to collect the data every day and then they actually display that one. So this is the way they actually the children, they learn it, they are proud that the station is with them and they, they actually show the data, display the data in the school as well as outside the walls so that the community will know what is happening to that one. And also we are training the community to use the rainfall data in, to some extent there management of their crops. And another one which we are actually doing under the AP Rice Kosam is that with the help of Microsoft, particularly with person Jitji Mukherjee, how to suggest the optimum groundnut sowing period. We have selected one mandal, Devankonda mandal. There we are actually trying to understand what are the, in the past 30 years, what happened to the sowing time, how it has changed and how best we can do this year because this is on a pilot scale we are trying to do that one and Microsoft is helping us to put it on the databases and then others and also through Bing such that farmers will be able to collect the information such that this is on a pilot scale we are doing that one. And we have done actually with the, I mean uh, some time back myself, GV and others we have done actually climate change and one point is that how to forewarn the pest population. So we try to actually do the Spodoptera adult population, particularly with the ferment crop. And when we see that one, the model actually, it will actually predict almost three weeks before that one, where you have actually adult population at the particular 47th week and also minimum temperature and also relative humidity in the afternoon. We are able to predict it more or less in almost all the years, perhaps uh, we can, uh, this time we can enhance it further and see that whether we can develop a, a stabilized model such that we can use it for forewarning the pest based on the weather and also the other one. Now I am almost coming to the end of my presentation because now in the last few months in fact people are talking about the El Nino and its effect on the rainfall and others. We have done a small work on El Nino effects and also on the rainfall 
and for the Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Maharashtra, and other states we have done. I'm just showing you one, one slide. Here, in fact, this is the latest picture of the Elino. What you see is that still, though people say that Elino is coming down, the, it is still at two, these SSTs are almost two degrees, and only here the Elino is slowly becoming, uh, I mean, almost normal, and then in future, maybe in that four months or so, perhaps we can expect the La Nino conditions. Because of this, what will happen to the rainfall? In fact, what we find is that, this is actually for the Telangana, what I am showing. For the month of, say, August, and particularly September and October, we see, in fact, these values actually, the percentage changes from the normal. That means 50% above normal, we can expect for Adilabad. Suppose if we take Medak district, what we see is that, say, in the month of August, we can expect almost 50% above normal rainfall. Whereas, in September and October, also, that means three months, I expect, almost higher rainfall than what we actually get. Whereas, in the month of June and July, we do not have that. So, what is the prediction generally, what we see is that one, the sowing rains this particular year could be a bit of risky, but the August, September, October, they are going to be have very good moisture and very good rainfall. And here, the watersheds and also the Telangana government, as all of you know that, they started a big project on how to actually enhance the water harvesting. Big project they are going on, so many places. I am sure that because of the rains in August, September, October, the deficits during November and December, they can be followed to some action. This is the predictions what we actually see that one. And this is my last trade, actually, in the proposed work plan for, say, the whole climate group. So what we want to do is that the climate databases at micro level, we want to update. And we do the analysis and using crop simulation models. And actually, we are already having uh, experiments in ICRSAT. And also, with the help of Janila this year, we want to actually validate whatever the identifications we have already with some of the experiments. Also, with the help of uh, Dr. Samir, we can do for PGNP also in a non destructive manner. Then, the uh, other thing is uh, monitor the weather and again bring the climate change awareness among the farming community, NGOs, and others. Then, develop, this is the last one, most important thing is the climate decision support systems we want to develop, such that uh, finally whatever the knowledge we have, we should reach the farmers through mobile phones, tablets, and others. So this decision support system, we would like to develop with the help of Microsoft and other partners. They are ready to do that one. We are now in the form of developing this. Now, what I can say is that we have almost no time to lose and adaptation mitigation is so important and as Dr. Mani Morning said, it's time to join hands to harness strengths of all our partners and time to take off for me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kesabo Rao. Uh, I can see that the temperatures are going uh, up, but uh, you have not reached our level in the Sahel yet. <laughs> so you still need two more degrees to get to how hot it is in Niger or in Mali, but really it's, uh, it's alarming the way the temperature is going up. So it's open for discussion, two minutes. Oops. Yeah. Right. You indicated that uh, 9114 and 00351 were tested to, uh, in the model. Was there any difference in decrease in the performance of these two varieties relatively? Because these two, these two varieties are quite different from each other. For the crop modeling, uh, climate change impacts. Yes, sir. There will be change with the varieties, sir. This is for TSCR, sir. For this is uh, actually we have done it for uh, IC9114. This is for 9114, but for other varieties it is still worse than 9114. What we, we have, but for uh, TMB2 as well as K6. Ah, uh, 351, no, uh, we have not done it, sir. But uh, we know 351 will be much better than these things. We are because that those genetic questions we, we, we based on two years what we have done it, we want to validate them. So this year perhaps we will validate, then we will be able to 
project uh, these climate change impacts on this thing. Uh, I just have a question or maybe a comment. Uh, huh, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's an impact of climate change. <laughs> But anyway, I just had a comment, not a question really was, it would be very interesting to also know and understand what is this impact of this climate change or variability, you know, on men, youth and children. Because we know that men and women experience the impacts of climate change differently. Similarly, youth also given that now you are looking at what are the aspirations of youth, uh, especially in agriculture, so it would be interesting to also understand how these impacts, you know, uh, are influencing men, women and youth in agriculture. Uh, is it that because of continuous droughts or variability they are not growing the crops that they used to grow before but they are growing, they have changed or they have diversified into other crops and how is this impacting men or women in terms of labor, it could be in terms of income, it could be in terms of drudgery. Uh, also it looks like how we can bring, um, uh, enhance their capacities to innovate so if we can have that understanding also built into this along with this quantitative data seeing how you know the temperatures are rising, carbon dioxide emissions are increasing and all that, that understanding would actually help us to see what kind of research is needed and where is that research needed and also see like what is it that we can facilitate to empower the communities especially like you know enhancing the capacities to innovate, that's what we need now, the community should be able to innovate by themselves. Maybe that additional information would give us a little more understanding and we, we can move forward, you know, in bringing about empowering the communities, uh, gender equality. And also look at nutrition also, focus on nutrition also. Does this mean that this, you know, because of less water, you know, is there a change in the nutritive value of the crops and then or how are the communities responding to this change in terms of their consumption habits and that. So I just wanted to add this comment so that the, the analysis would be more interesting and also it would be more complete also. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, Kavesha, um, we're doing this type of work uh, globally in Africa and I want to see a community of practice develop around this. Uh, and you're our most experienced uh, agroclimatologists. So, so we need to get uh, your thinking together with those that are doing this work in Africa and have a, a community of practice. Well, one small point is that I think when, as scientists talking about climate change we should present all the dimensions. So not just the impact on rainfall, impact on temperature, but there's a CO2 fertilisation impact in there as well that offsets those and what's the net consequence of that. So I'd like to see us cover that full spectrum of impacts. Um, the CO2 fertilisation is a changing transpiration efficiency, a very important aspect of climate change. So I for the community of practice around this. I fully agree with you, sir. In fact, in this model, sir, we haven't uh, enhanced the CO2. We have taken the 380 ppm as a constant, which is, uh, in fact, not very, very correct because we so there's a problem itself will work that. even... That's a real problem reporting that, if that's yes, the sir. case. Yes, sir. And you have to declare that as yes. part of your presentation. Yes, Otherwise, you, people get... Um, you know, pushing it too far in one direction. So we, the, in terms of how we do this, ICRASAT needs to be at the forefront of this globally, this area around climate change impacts, what the impact of mitigation might be and mitigation. 